Hello, greetings, and welcome to River Oak Dental's very first video edition of Dental School Diaries. We chose a vlog format for this month because I am going to be going over a lot of information, and it's just kind of a more appropriate and fun format, we thought, for this month. So, I hope you can all bear with my already nasally voice being beautifully enhanced by this sinus infection. Uh, but I've already put off the video for a couple weeks, so with that, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. Um, about the title of this video, it's been about a month since I've chosen to withdraw uh, from UF College of Dentistry. I was in my second semester of my second year at UFCD, so I call it my terrible twos. And what this means is that I will be repeating an entire year of my dental school life over again, um, beginning in January. And I know this sounds tedious, it sounds terrible, but I'm gonna explain why this was the right choice for me. Uh, it's not super unique, I'm not the first, I won't be the last. Um, so I really just wanna share a little of how the process went in my case and ultimately, my goal at Dental School Diaries has always been to talk about my real dental school experience even when it's not so fun for me. So, uh, also in this video, I am going to have to get on my soapbox and rant a little bit. Uh, about head and neck cancers and about why I believe the healthcare community needs to improve as a whole a bit. Um, finally, I will finish up with something I actually like to talk about, which is getting hitched. Um, I, it has been about two weeks since I've been married and uh, I'll explain how it's hectic but possible to, you know, have a wedding while in professional school. So regarding the withdrawal. I'll start from the beginning because dropping out uh, was not an overnight thing for me. Um, it's now December 2018, so I'm going to take you back to June of this year uh, where I had failed my first psychomotor. It was a class 2 amalgam preparation on tooth number 20, which is a bottom left premolar. And what happens is the wall orientation, if you're looking at the side of the tooth or the proximal view, those walls should be nice and convergent, like a house. Um, that convergent shape allows the amalgam to be retained in the tooth since it doesn't chemically bond. But what I did was one of my walls was oriented divergently. Um, and so if a patient were to chew on a caramel or something with this preparation, that uh, amalgam restoration would pop right out. Wouldn't be good times. So. This was our first psychomotor though, an operative two, which was our, our summer semester of our second year. And um, it wasn't such a big deal to me because I knew my day would come that I was gonna fail. If you remember at the beginning of the year, I said I was gonna set myself up for failure in the blog. And that's because everyone has to fail at something. So I didn't even cry. I went and I brushed it off, got some ice cream with my friends and we were all good to go. Um, plus that day there was also a number 14 amalgam restoration that I did fortunately pass and that counted as a second psychomotor for the class. So anyway, next few weeks passes. A couple things did happen outside of school that were a little stressful for me. Um, my car was totaled, my loops broke. Uh, they're just some superficial things that kind of distracted me around the time the third psychomotor came up. And the third psychomotor for Operative 2 was going to be a Class 2 composite restoration. And that was on tooth number 30. So, you know, thing, I was distracted, but I was ready to rock this. You know, I had been practicing diligently, everything was looking good. And then on the day of the psychomotor, I couldn't get my floss through. And what that looks like is if you have two teeth together, like this is this is tooth number 30 and this is 29, and uh, the composite was just so tight in there that I couldn't get the floss through. And the reason that would be an automatic fail is because if your patient can't floss properly, then it's just gonna be a plaque retention, um, cavities, bad times overall. You don't want that. And it could be easily fixed by just, you know, filing down that composite. But I had 20 minutes left on the clock and 
this had never happened to me in practice and I didn't even think to put a wedge so I just ran in there with a soul flex disc and I did the red coarse disc which you should not touch mind you if you're just trying to like take off a little bit of composite um, so I did that, did some polishing files, and the next thing I knew, I had taken off like two millimeters of healthy tooth. And that was also an automatic fail. So, you know, I just turned it in. I knew I failed, went to the professor the next morning. I was crying and explained like, listen, I've already failed two out of three of these psychomotors. I don't really know what to do. Um, and you know, course director, Dr. Haddock was awesome. Pep talked me through it. Started looking at my work every uh, few days, every week, uh, set me up with other faculty. I got a tutor and I was so focused on improving. You know, I cut my didactic studying time down and just was constantly in sim lab. So I'm ready, things are looking good. But then y'all, Psychomotor 4 comes around and you know I have to pass this because if I don't pass it, I fail the entire class. And when you fail a class, you have to report to the Student Performance and Evaluation Committee, which is SPEC, that's what we call it. Um, and then you're on academic probation. And I was just petrified because I had just gotten like my dream position with the school. Um, I was an admissions committee officer and things were going, um, well for me, so I really didn't want to be on probation. And we did this uh, number 18 com complex class two composite, and my work was beautiful. I had clean lines. I had axial contour on point. Like I was very, very happy with it. I told my friends, you know, I'd be shocked if I don't pass. Um, but I was a little nervous that my contact was super light. Um, the opposite problem the last time, it was too tight last time. This time my floss wasn't really resisting, like it didn't make that nice pop that you would like to feel in here. So I was like, you know, that's okay because that's just like a minor category that if it's light, you know, it's not a big deal. And then the grade comes. And I failed on a critical error and I like I went in there and I'm like I need proof like what did I fail on so I had an open contact meaning when I said my floss didn't resist enough I really should have thought about that one harder because uh, that means my contact was open and <laughs> when that happens your patient is gonna get food trapped again cavities bad times and you just it's not a good situation. Um, but you know, it, if it were to happen in a clinical situation, it's not the end of the world. You just, you know, drill the composite out, go back through and add more. But in a psychomotor, you're timed. So uh, I was done, like devastated, crying on an elevator like a toddler. I went from being, you know, a nearly straight A dental student to blowing this class completely. Um, and I will also try to post a few pictures on the River Oak Dental blog page uh, so you can really grasp the concept that it's really one or two millimeters difference in dentistry, so it can be rough, but um, at this point, you know, I'm just trying to finish strong the semester and all my other classes, and I'll just have to re remediate these three psychomotors in operative two that I'll mess up and then I'll move on. Um, so to explain when you fail a psychomotor, you have to perform it again at the end of the year and it's called a reassessment. You get several days to attempt it um, and you just pass it and then you pass the class and you're fine, move on. Uh, but when you do what I did, which is fail three of the four psychomotors, that means you have to remediate. Now the difference between the reassessment and the remediation is that you now get one chance to uh, do each one of these again and then your grade will change from your F to a D or an R for remediated. So the remediation is obviously a much higher press pressure than a reassessment and you don't want to have to remediate if you can avoid it. But it was the position I found myself in. So through all this though, I had a lot of support. The operative department was so understanding. They let me do the three remediations over two weeks so I didn't have to cram it into two days with the um, reassessments. 
Uh, so I stayed over my summer break. I skipped break and uh, practiced and then took all three. And I was almost good enough. <laughs> um, so I did successfully pass two of the three, but then that dang number 20 premolar. <laughs> um, instead of the wall now being divergent, it was too convergent that it was actually considered an undercut or unsupported enamel. And when that happens, uh, you risk fracturing the tooth because there's just not enough support. And so here I'm sweating bullets, y'all. Like I have now failed one of the three remediations and now I have to meet with spec because I've officially failed the class. Um, and even deeper at rock bottom is the fact that operative two is a prerequisite class for operative three. So you can't officially move on with the rest of the class uh, unless you somehow make up for this class. And essentially spec will have two on the book um, choices, which is to retract me um, with the next class or dismiss me from the school altogether. And I wasn't really worried about dismissal because uh, my record was really good up until this point. I was just worried that I didn't want to repeat the whole year over a single class when I knew I could do it. Like I knew I had just overcompensated this tooth because I was scared of the divergency. So I went overly convergent. And um, for those of you who don't know, mandibular um, premolars have a pretty hefty like lingual tilt to them. So it's a little harder to get the wall orientation on them, especially if you don't have a good understanding of what you're doing. And in hindsight, I really didn't grasp the concept of a lingual tilt, which I do now. So progress. But, um, you know, everything was just not looking up for me. So fortunately, though, the committee meeting is delayed about a month, and that totally works in my favor. Uh, the coordinator was out of town or something, so I started my fall 2018 semester with my normal class, 2021, and I used that month, like, perfectly. Like, I spent that whole time practicing. I got my eyes checked uh, to s make sure that I was seeing everything correctly. Um, and I actually wasn't. My optic center was off and my glasses in my loop, so I am really glad that I did that. Better late than never. Um, I got together a list of faculty who I knew could vouch for my work because um, I didn't feel like I was significantly behind the rest of the class, and uh, I had professors who would agree with that statement. And I uh, really just wanted to walk into that room and be able to advocate for myself and suggest that I get a second chance at this number 20 amalgam preparation remediation because I knew I had the potential to do it. Um, I just needed to not overcompensate on that wall. Uh, additionally, in this time, I had taken my first prosthodontic psychomotor, which was like the most valuable part of that month because I was able to walk in and say, look, I got an A on this crown preparation, so I know I can, you know, do dentistry. And um, I had also passed my mock psychomotor for operative three, so I really felt like I deserved to stay with my class. And I had this meeting in August, and by the grace of God, they listened to me. You know, they, they consulted with operative faculty and recognized that I truly put in so much hard work and I took it seriously that I could use this as an opportunity to improve. And I knew I had made a mistake, um, or several mistakes. <laughs> um, and they said I handled the situation very well. They recognized that I had owned up to my failures, highlighted that I had never failed a hand skill component in dental anatomy or in operative one. I was a top 20 ranked student. I had a solid GPA and you know, this was my bad class and I just dropped the ball. And so they had really generously granted me this permission to prove myself and take that remediation over again. So that's my number one advice. If you ever find yourself in this position, like that wasn't like in the rule book for them to allow me to do that. So they didn't have to do that. So if you 
go in and like are very honest with yourself and look in the mirror and understand where you went wrong and offer solutions. They're very willing to hear you out. Um, don't go in and try to blame others. Don't say the faculty wasn't there for me and you know, uh, my tutor was bad and all this other stuff. Um, I really kind of uh, was very vulnerable with them and told them that I know that these certain things are areas I could improve. And um, But I also wouldn't suggest crumbling and acting like you're not good enough and that you're terrible because at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to convince a room full of strangers to believe in you, so believe in yourself. Um, so, like I said, that meeting was in August, life was good, I'm cutting my didactic studying time in half to practice operative, and I'm set to take this new remediation on October 26th over fall break, so it doesn't interfere with my fall classes. Um, now in the September through October time frame though, things at home like hit the fan, and the details aren't needed on that, but there were just some major events that really hit me hard, and I did not want to be at school anymore. Um, I was literally growing sh sick with stress, like mentally, physically, was not healthy. I was getting brain fog. I fell down the stairs like three times in two months. Uh, I started losing items. I was losing like keys and headphones and I was just feeling really overwhelmed um, and was in another world. And so I finally stopped trying to put on my brave face and I talked with our student advisor, um, She's our advocate, Dr. Probert, and I let her know that I was sort of starting to crack under pressure. And I still did decide to take my remediation on October 26th, but I kid you not, that night I got a phone call from home about like another family urgency, and it's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Um, so I fired off an email that night to the operative department and the office education and they probably think I'm a little insane, a little uh, off my rocker, but I spilled my heart out in like two paragraphs about, you know, how I felt like I was drowning and I really needed to talk about the possibility of a withdrawal and I kind of didn't care how I did on the remediation, whether it was a pass or a fail, like I wasn't confident about my hand skills enough to just like handle everything at once. Um, and honestly, like I was just like, things are just not okay for me right now. And throughout the months though, before I fired off the email, I had kept in contact with SPEC and Office Education and kind of let them know what was I successful at, what was I having trouble with. And so it wasn't like I totally hit them out of nowhere with uh, two paragraphs <laughs> of, um, woes but they uh they knew i was having a rough semester so anyway ufcd is just perfect like i kid you not they really are um dr spazetti who leads at the office of education she met with me on a whim and she talked to me for so long about what the withdrawal process would look like especially like financially um and they were really just putting my needs at the forefront of their days, which I think really speaks volumes about the UF community and what uh, they stand for. So uh, since though there were only seven weeks or so left of the semester, I had went back and forth for about a week as to whether or not I really did want to withdraw. You know, a lot of my friends were reminding me, like, we're so close, keep pushing. Um, and my family really didn't need me at home. It's just I kind of wanted to be there to support them. So I thought they could last till December. And honestly, if I had not struggled so much in operative, I might have done that. But I was just so sick of not being confident and um, consistent in my hand skills. Even though I didn't necessarily feel I was really behind my class, I just wasn't where I wanted to be on a personal level. So, um, and even though I had passed that operative three mock psychomotor, I failed the real thing for like this tiny little piece of composite that I left by the cingulum on a class four um, tooth number eight. So it was a stupid mistake. Uh, but again, like just that brain fog, I just was missing things. So uh, 
it was a critical fail. And plus, you know, I was getting married in about a month. So in all this chaos going on, I hadn't really gotten to think about my wedding and be happy. And uh, if my family really needed my help and I wasn't excelling at school with my current state of mind, why not go home? relax, allow myself to enjoy this incredible event with my fiance and just return next year with a fresh, better start and better version of myself because life's a journey, not a destination. I want to be an exceptional dentist, not an okay dentist. Um, I wanted to be there to support my loved ones and get pumped about walking down the aisle. So uh, it sounded like a pretty great deal to me. And in this time, my heart is so full of love for UF faculty, uh, man, they were with me every step of the way. I have to give a shout out to Dr. Cassiano, Dr. Rivero, Dr. Caraballo, Dr. Delgado, Dr. Haddock, all the operative faculty, um, Dr. Prober, our advocate, as well as Anthony and Jarrell, and then Dr. Spazzetti over in Office of Education for really getting me through everything. And long story long, <laughs> that is way why I decided to repeat a year of school. Now from there, this is how the process went. So I went to Dr. Spazzetti, Office of Education. She drew me up a withdrawal letter and a list of things that I needed to do Hello. Um, before I was formally released from the school. I had to check out my locker, clear out my account of all my equipment that was leased by the school. And so uh, there were about 10 items on the checklist. It took about a day to complete everything and go get the signatures from each department. So it really wasn't that bad. Um, the biggest scare was financial aid because if you withdraw too early, then you are required to immediately pay all your loans back to your finance. Yes, this is Sprout. <laughs> um, and uh, I had fortunately though hit the 60% mark for the semester so I didn't have to return those loans immediately. I get to wait until I graduate to pay back those loans, which is ideal. Um, so again, all I can say is like open communication, like constantly be talking to the people in charge and letting them know where you're at because you don't want to kind of drop out out of nowhere and not let anybody know what's going on. Um, you have to ask for them to help. And then they, we, we sat down, we looked at the National Dental Board Examination Part 1 um, and the classes that would benefit me to retake. Uh, so I wanted to retake like histology because I hadn't really retained a lot of information from that and it was a heavy hit subject on the boards um, and so they really let me a la carte my schedule and that was nice. Then I you know told my class of 2021 that I was heading home for a few months. They were so supportive and um, I love my class to death. They are my family so um, we'll definitely catch up when I'm back at school. And then I'm going to be starting with the D1 class of 2022, uh, which I'm so excited about because they're so warm and welcoming. Uh, they've already reached out to me and I'm looking forward to meeting them in January. I am a little bit nervous just because they all know each other and it's a new dynamic, um, but I'm just ready for my family to get a little bigger. And my husband's so sweet because he even bought me some new scrubs so I could feel like new year, new me, um, and really get that fresh start that I needed to take on the new year. So um, I do not withdraw, uh, regret my withdrawal for a second. I think it was 100% what I needed. And one of the biggest reasons is because the rant I'm about to go on. Um, so one of the things that had happened in October, right before that remediation, was I had an immediate family member get diagnosed with tonsil cancer, stage four tonsil cancer, um, because it's in the neck. Um, and I was just very frustrated because it had been diagnosed like six months later than it really should have been. Um, and the patient, I'm gonna respect which member it is, their privacy, so um, they go to the doctor complaining of a lump in the neck and the mass is firm, it's not moving, it's growing in size over the months, and so these are hallmark features of a tumor. And uh, the doctors just threw her on antibiotics just in case it was like an infection and kind of put her off, put her off. It was like a month before her next appointment. 
And then finally, six months later, they uh, referred her to an ear, nose, and throat doctor who took a scan and was like, wow, I think we should biopsy this because it doesn't look great. Um, so that was finally diagnosed. Uh, meanwhile, I feel like a complete jerk because that means I don't call home enough to know all this is even happening. Um, and I don't even find out until it's already diagnosed. And for those of you who don't know, dentists, one of our primary jobs is to recognize and diagnose um, any pathology of like the head and neck. Um, so it's something that I could have like known the signs and symptoms of and said, hey, you need to stop and biopsy this. But my family knows that my education is very important to me and they don't like to bother me. And so that is something like that's my New Year's resolution to make sure that they feel like they can come to me when um, things are not looking right for them. So um, I am very uh, frustrated about that. But fortunately, this particular cancer has a great prognosis. She's in treatment. Everything is looking on the bright side. Um, but once it was diagnosed, they delayed treatment for almost two weeks because of a miscommunications between the doctor's offices. So we were undo an, off to an uneasy start. I was getting very frustrated, um, but the cancer did not spread beyond the tonsil region. However, this ex entire experience has been so eye-opening, so humbling, because I've always been empathetic to cancer patients and said like, that must be so difficult for you, I'm so sorry, please let me know if I can do anything to reduce this burden for you. But after experiencing like chemotherapy and radiation and all these appointments, like at least second hand and seeing what the patients go through, I am just like blown away because like, um, for example, the first day of chemo, you come in, you have this tube stuck in your chest, you're there from like eight to five, so eight or nine hours with this tube in your chest. Meanwhile, doctors and nurses are like firing off instructions to you verbally, not even like writing it all down for you. So they're throwing appointments, medications, everything you need to do. And me with a um, education in healthcare, like I'm barely following this. I'm sitting there like with my crossword puzzle, like trying to just like write in the corner of the page, like everything that needs to be done. And it's so overwhelming. And these patients are so strong just for showing up, like my hands go out to them. So I would encourage um, all healthcare providers who interact with patients, um, a variety of patients to just take that time to if a patient's open to letting you shadow them um, and see what it's like from their side of the fence, it is such a um, wonderful opportunity to gain that perspective uh, so that we can better understand how they feel when we're presenting them with our treatment plans and making sure that they're truly um, registering all the information that we're sharing with them um, and making sure that their needs are met. Uh, during a very difficult time. Mention one more thing that when we go to the first day of radiation, the nurse comes through eating a piece of pizza, which like, you know, I've got a good sense of humor. At first, you know, I thought that the pizza thing was kind of funny, um, but I was a little bit offended by how unprofessional it was once she like didn't even have the right patient when she was speaking to us because she said we were just there to get pictures. And I'm like, no, we just came from chemo. She needs radiation today. Um, so, I did have a polite uh, conversation with the worker and I've, and with all the workers, um, staff, doctors, nurses throughout the process about how I felt like our needs weren't totally being met and um, I am truly um, blown away by the response. Everybody has really gotten it together and understand that I was quite uncomfortable with how everything was being handled and everyone stepped up their game. We are on track. And there's only about six more weeks of treatment left, so we are excited that we're on the up and up. So, um, small side note though, while I am talking about healthcare providers, I would like to really highlight how proud I am of Dr. Marshall and the River Oak Dental team uh, for how seriously they always take patient care because I remember we did have a patient one time with an ulcer on the lateral border of the tongue, which is a hot spot for oral cancer. And Dr. Marshall like just begged this patient. She's like, I know time is money. I know that, you know, you don't want to come back and see me, but I assure you, like, if we just 
follow up in two weeks and then you can go on your way. I just want to make sure this isn't something more serious. Um, and I really respect that, you know, that she's willing to take that extra time to make sure her patients are okay. And I can say that for the whole River Oak Dental team, um, which is why I've been so willing to dedicate the past five years uh, to working with them because that individualized attention is something that I really um, respect and hold value in um, and trust my own health with them and my friends and family's health. So anyway, we have talked about withdrawing from dental school and we have talked about how to uh, communicate more effectively with our patients, taking that care seriously and recognizing characteristic features of disease. Um, that being said, also as a patient, if you feel your needs aren't being met, if you respectfully and politely come to your healthcare providers, because at the end of the day, we are all human, we all make mistakes. I know working for an office, I have made more than enough mistakes, um, but I always do try to own those, make up for those, um, then you can really get things done. Like, you don't have to be silent if you feel like your needs aren't being met. Um, and so with that, I will segue into uh, some tips. I will do five tips for uh, what I think it takes to tie the knot while in dental school. Um, and my first one, I will go with have a long engagement because we were engaged almost two years, Jonathan and I, and it really took the pressure off of needing to get everything done in a short amount of time for the big day. And, you know, it was, a breeze really um, plus school is stressful and you want to make sure that your relationship is healthy and um, you're really ready for that commitment because marriage is a big thing um, and you want it to be healthy and lasting throughout school and life <laughs> so then got a um, number two I would say find people that you trust and delegate your tasks I barely planned my own wedding like my maid of honor was my stepmom and she did an awesome job had an awesome time planning um, I picked basics like color scheme uh, menu items location but she called all the vendors booked everything made the centerpieces like so find someone you like and just like throw it on them um, and if you don't trust anybody, maybe spend the extra few bucks for, for a professional to do it for you. I don't know. Um, but it was so helpful for me to not have to worry about getting everything done by myself. Then number three, do try to be open-minded. Um, it's okay if you're a little high maintenance, like no shame in liking things the way you want them. But the more, um, lenient you are as a bride or as a groom um and willing to go with the flow like you're gonna have a much more fun time um and so the whole time it's just like eh sounds good eh sounds good um and I really wasn't too concerned about perfection because I know it was gonna be a good time um and then I will say you know use your brakes wisely Number four, um, if you don't mind skipping, you know, your spring vacations and like going out places, um, cause you might as well save that money up for your wedding and having like a real bomb honeymoon. Um, so put that money away, stay home and take that time to like go to your dress fittings or your tux fittings. Um, really like, you know, get everything done that you want done when school's slow. Um, because why not? <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be like cramming it while you're studying for exams and it's just not going to be as smooth sailing. And then finally, number five, um, the advice I wish I would have taken and didn't uh, is try to look at your school schedule before you pick a date because I had picked my date before I even started dental school um, and there were actually exams the week of or excuse me, rather, the week before and the week after our wedding. And so I was very fortunate that I was already withdrawn from school, um, but it would have been super hectic, overwhelming, if I had really gotten married during that week of school. 
So um, it's definitely possible. There are plenty of slow weeks uh, where you can have a wedding where you're free in dental school. So if you go hunt down the Office of Education, you at least try to get like the prior year schedule. Um, it'll make your life easier. So all in all, we did have the best wedding day. Like I could not ask for anything better. Um, it was exhausting. Uh, but I did not get stressed for a single second on my wedding day, and I'm stoked to start this new chapter with Jonathan. Um, it's going to be a fun time. We are heading out for our honeymoon next week, so I will wrap this video up since I have gone on for long enough and um, go get packing. And I want to thank you all so much for listening, for always following River Oak Dental, um, our Facebook, Instagram. We uh, appreciate your support and we hope that you have the warmest and happiest holidays and with all our love we will see you next month thank you go gators